All right, we're going to talk red light, and uh, this top diagram, uh, we have an A-gap uh, read spot, and on the bottom diagram, we have a C-gap read spot. And uh, again, red light is pretty simple. Uh, there's nobody in this guy's gap. There's no one close enough for him to strike unless they attack him or he takes at least a step. Okay, same thing here. Okay, red light just means that you're uncovered. Okay, uh, simple as that. Now, talking about the A-gap, what we do, okay, on the front side of this thing is we tell this guy he's going to match that man. He's going to match that man, okay? And what that means is, and actually I, use the, I, I started using the term dig. He's going to dig that man out. What they're going to do is they're going to step to their gap, and if anything hits their gap, okay, they're going to take it. Okay, so if there's a, an overhang here, uh, we're going to take that. Okay, we're assuming that if he hits it and he hits it, then this guy's running out of there. Okay, um, we are not going to let that man cross our stripe unless he's bound and determined on a long, long stick. So any skin that he that he makes, anything in the gap, we got to at least take something off him. We've got to hit him with if he's within striking distance. Same thing here. Okay, but in the A gap, uh, we we call this now. We used to call it match. We call it dig because we're shoulder rolling. Okay, we're going to take our right shoulder. We're going to step with our left foot. We're going to roll that shoulder down in case we get attacked. We're looking for anything to hit in our gap, and then we're gonna come back on this man because we're, we've determined that he's playing the C gap, and we gotta grab him with both hands and dig him out. We're gonna try and tear him away. This center is gonna do the same thing, okay? He is going to dig this man, okay? And the reason he's digging him is, is theoretically, what you have here is the reed spot. Actually, we've even moved the reed spot this far back, okay? But the read spot, let's say it's crack of the center. We want to dig this guy, okay? Now, here's the guy we got to coach a little bit, all right? What he's going to do is brace and look for a spike, okay? He's going to look for a run through. He's going to look for a looper. He's going to look for everything, okay? Safety blitz, uh, crossfires, whatever you want to talk. Any, any threats in here, okay? A threat to us is somebody that's playing the run more than he's playing the pass. So in other words, a guy out here we're not worried about, a guy right here pressed up we are worried about, okay? And we can't, we can't give up our gap first. So what we wanna do is brace, okay? And what we're trying to do is not give up dig leverage on this man. So basically we're not gonna cross his stripe if we can help it, all right? Now, what we're gonna do is brace, and replace, okay? And we're gonna chip to make sure that this guy's blocked. We're gonna chip using our right shoulder. And then we're, we're, we're never gonna take more than one, two, the third time our foot hits the ground, the th okay, left foot, right foot, left foot. We're gonna go up on our spot, okay? But we're letting stuff come to us. So if this were to happen, boom, boom and a boom we'd wind up taking the man that attacks the b gap let the center take the man that attacks the a gap let the backside guard uh, take this nose as he rocks but the, the whole idea is this don't let these guys travel unmolested now if they're going to rock this hard we're expecting our center to see that and he'll he'll have that indication because he's really looking at his gap if this man rocks away, we're expecting that man to be picked up by the center. And we're not going to let this guard just go sailing by him or smoking out of there without at least putting hands on him if he can. Okay? That's the way we think. This guy in this particular, in this particular defense, he is in the stovepipe. Okay? And we're going to determine that that is yellow light. This guy's a threat either way. Okay, 
He's not sure, so he sees it as green light. And what we're going to do is make a call, a combo call. Uh, the center's either going to work with the guard or the tackle. Uh, excuse me. The center's either going to work with the guard or let the guard work with the tackle. Okay. And we're going to make a combo call. He's going to shoulder roll and chip this man, and he's going to try and cover him up. Now, we started using skip cover for these long, these long uh, covers, okay? But we're not, we're not worried about, like, is he moving an inch or two inch? To him, this guy is yellow. To him, he's green, okay? And, of course, the guard is looking for this spot and that linebacker. But if he rolls out of there too fast, he'll never get in front of it. Okay, we want him to get in front of it, and we want this to essentially be a double team that takes this man to the spot, but still is able to pick up. So that's why we want to step, we want to take that gator leg step and roll the shoulder down, the right shoulder, and make sure that we can hold ground. Okay, thank you, Danny Pierman. Hold ground and buy this guy time to get over here, and he's going to get in front. He's not going to try and push the man this way. He's going to try and get his head in front. And the two of them together, what he's doing is not shutting off the tackle. He's letting the tackle get in front. So he's going to be chipping with his right shoulder. Same thing with this guy. He is not going to shut that center off. Okay, he's not going to shut him off. He is going to come back and chip with his right shoulder. Now the deal is he wants to stay as square as possible. Okay, and we, I, I don't know, I go back and forth. I let them, I let, let them uh, uh, shoulder roll initially, but basically because they're in air, they stay square. That's the rule. Okay, if you're in air, you stay square. If you're, if you're not in air, if you're yellow light, you want to roll the shoulder. Okay, of course, he's going to roll the shoulder and then he's going to come up. And again, the reason we, and same thing here, he's going to roll the shoulder. The reason we roll the shoulder is to protect our chest. So now our hands don't have to necessarily be in front of us uh, all the time, okay? And we just think that by rolling the shoulder, we, turn, we can turn into a rock and we're not gonna get knocked back. We're not gonna expose our chest, okay? And that's the big deal, all right? Now going down here in the wide zone, here's the read spot, okay? And I'm not going to talk about all these mechanics and things. We used to hand that ball off like that and run. Run. Uh, we used to hand that ball off behind the quarterback. Uh, you know, you can uh, you can get in the pistol and run this, and then do the same thing with the quarterback. Roll, you know, roll, reverse out or whatever. You can move this guy here, put him inside saddle, and bring him across the front of the quarterback. Whatever you want to do. I'm not getting into that. What we do understand is that these linebackers will get moved. These linebackers won't get moved. They'll get, they should step in. That's why we don't want to give up leverage. That's why we don't want to go smoking out of there in any way, shape, or form. We want to be able to block this man if we perceive him in the B-gap and still be in a position to, to pick up anything that's hitting us. Okay. Now, going over here, we're going to start with the center. He is going to Apache. Now, I've, I've gotten... Uh, you know, extensive uh, comments about this, but I'm just telling you, he's turning his shoulders, he's arc stepping, and he's going to try and encircle this guy. This guard is going to brace, and he's not in a hurry to replace, okay? But he will brace, brace, brace at most three times until let this thing unfold. So if he's getting a brace and he feels noise, okay, and you know, you, you, you'll, you'll know by the whole picture if this, if this guy back gaps, he's going to rewind and help that center. But he's not going to rewind immediately because if he does, he's going to shut the center off, okay? This guy's going to shoulder roll just like he normally would, but he's going to be a little wider. And he's got to understand that he's got to get in front and cover that thing. Now, he's an Apache, he's an Apache, and he's an Apache, okay? Here, he's a match, he's a stovepipe, and he's a stovepipe, match and match, okay? That's just the way it is, okay? We're figuring that that back is going to bring people to the read spot, and that we want to we want to step accordingly. But if we step to air, we want to get square with this guard. We want to get square. Same thing with the center. If this nose rocks, 
we're stepping to air, we want to get square. And we can see this, this, whatever, whatever's going on. He's going to stay square as long as he can until he's attacked. If he's attacked immediately, okay, he's stepping deep. If he's attacked immediately, he should be able to cover that up. He's going to cover that up. He's going to try and get his headgear on the outside. He's going to go past the midline, get his headgear on the outside breastplate. You know, we don't... I, don't, I used to talk a lot about aiming points and stuff like that, but really what we're talking about nowadays is you are you. You can't control him, okay? You're going to be able to step so far to get cover. We know what cover is, and we want to tear this man out if he's, if he's going to go with us and mirror us. We want to be able to torque him and tear him if he doesn't want to go with us, okay? We, we have to be able to do that. Okay, we can't go smoking out here and hope that he comes with us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he might, but if we go out here and leave the guard two guys a block, we're screwed. Same thing with the center. He wants to get an Apache. Once he gets an Apache, he doesn't want to go smoking out of there. He wants to, he's in the air now, so he wants to choke it down and give this guard a chance to get in front of that. And of course, if the nose goes with him, guess what? Now he's in the stovepipe. Now he can work with cover, tear him, the back will be able to make him right. Okay, if he can tear him to the read spot, the back will cut off of him. If he gets blunted by trying to cover right here, and this guy just ricochets to the read spot, he'll never block him. Okay, it's just the way it is. Same thing with this guy. If, he, if he's trying to hit this guy too soon, he's never going to block that linebacker. He wants to move as though this man isn't really there. Okay, if he's square, he's square to air, he's buying time for the Apache. This guy is going, and we're using skip Apache, but what, what over the years, you know, I've gone back and forth with this. The first skip, we're square, and we're going to turn our shoulders afterwards and get that good Apache. We're going to get our headgear on this side of this man. Okay, we don't want to get blunted. We don't want to be able to let him ricochet. We don't want to attack him. We want to go this way, this way this way, and circle, and circle, and circle. We want to be able to encircle the nose if he rocks. We want to be able to encircle circle this guy if he spikes, okay? We want to be able to pick up and encircle the run through. We want to keep it away from the read spot. Pretty simple. So let's just say we're going through it and we go brace. We don't feel anything, okay? Brace again, brace again. And when we brace, brace means you're stepping deep. Okay, you don't want to gain ground in air, okay, because when you gain ground, it's like running a red light. You're in the red light. You don't want to turn your motor off, but you don't want to go into the intersection because if you do, you're going to get clipped, all right? You want to stay out of the intersection as long as you can and then go and get cover on this man, get cover on him. Of course, if he back gaps, you know right away that you want to put the brakes on. Do not turn your shoulders. Do not rotate. Keep your shoulders square and translate back and rewind and chip this guy. Don't shut the center off. Okay? Don't shut the center off. If this man runs through, you know he's turned himself into a down lineman. That's the end of that. You just cover him up. Everything's good. Okay? If he runs away and this guy two gaps to tackle... You want to hammer that end out and bring the linebacker back to you. Bring him back to you. Okay? Same thing here. This guy runs away. Tackle gets the overtake pretty easily. Okay? He Apaches. Okay? You're in that red area. You, want to, you don't want to be in a hurry. And if that man runs away, you want to turn and hammer this guy and bring the linebacker back to you. Okay. Of course, if anything anything funny goes on, he'll let it go. This guy loops. Everybody's going to block their gaps first. Okay. Block your gaps first. Yellow light, red light. Okay. It's pretty simple if you ask me. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't like to change my words, and I try to encourage people that are using this stuff not to use different words. Some people do, some people don't. That's up to you. What I do know is this. If you're too soon, if you're piercing too soon, it's too late to give anybody help. Okay, so if you don't learn anything else, 
Square to air and too soon is too late. Okay? Hope that helped. Bye.